Hey, 3 DMJers, this is Coach Brad Loomis. A short while ago, I had to undergo surgery to repair bilateral inguinal hernias. You know, that's when the visceral fat that's inside your abdomen starts protruding outside your abdomen, just above your pubic bone. I could not train for four weeks after the surgery, and for an additional two weeks, I could not train with anything greater than 20 pounds. It was painful and seemed ridiculous to be doing hundreds of reps with 20 pounds, but I could not wait to get rolling again. Now I'm starting back to what could be considered normal training, but it's still a fraction of what I could do. I don't care if it takes me eight months or eight years. I'll get back to where I was eventually, and hence why I'm calling this Rebuilding Brad. Welcome back 3DMJers to Rebuilding Brad, and that's what we're all about here, right? Is uh, bodybuilding, rebuilding, building up, body rebuilding, bodybuilding, right? Um, and speaking of bodybuilding, talking about bodybuilding shows uh, and the competitions therein, that was a nice segue, huh? Um, <clears throat> just wanted to talk about the sport of bodybuilding in general. We talked about this before on the 3DMJ podcast. And um, those of you who listened to that podcast, my position is really unchanged. Um, you know, the, the, the other 3DMJ, you know, coaches, uh, Jeff Alberts uh, and, and Alberto Nunez, um, you know, we'll, we'll frequently uh, have a friendly debate over the, the state of bodybuilding right now. Um, but yeah, my position's not changed. Um, you know, bodybuilding is just right now, if it's not a dying sport, it is, uh, it's a very, it's in a very deep lull right now. Um, and it, it pains me to say that because I, I love bodybuilding, you know, that's kind of like my, my first um, non-adolescent, like adult sport, right? Um, and yeah, it pains me to say that, but you just look at the evolution of bodybuilding since when I um, was uh, in my amateur heyday, I guess you might say, shows look dramatically different now, dramatically different. Um when I won my pro card in 2008, uh, we had eight lightweights. No, I'm sorry, middleweights. We had eight middleweights. Um, I want to say there was five lightweights, uh, four heavyweights, and uh, seven light heavyweights. So you do your math there. Uh, that's over 20 bodybuilders. And when, me winning the, the the middleweight class, I had to I had to to best seven other um, middleweights. And then on top of that, when you went to the overall, you had to best three other bodybuilders, the, the heavyweight, the light heavyweight, and then the lightweight, right? And that was in 2008. And um, it seems to me, if my, my memory is correct, it seemed to peak, I want to say 2011, 12, 13. Um, I remember my second pro bodybuilding show it was just two classes, lightweight and heavyweight, and we had 12 uh, in our lightweight class. Um, and now it seems like, let's just look at the facts, right? Because um, I'm seeing you know, a lot of, of, of opinions <clears throat> on social media that bodybuilding's not dead, bodybuilding's live and kicking, you know? But let's just look at the facts. Me, myself, I have attended probably six, seven shows in the last couple of years, either as an official, uh, a coach, or just going to watch, right? Um, and averaging out the bodybuilders, the total bodybuilders, okay? Keep in mind, there's not enough bodybuilders to, to seg, seg, you know, split in the classes, right? Um, but total bodybuilders, I say the average is four, okay? And I'd be willing to bet that if you go to any just kind of local show. Now, I'm not talking big shows, but big shows are a rarity, right? Like we really only have one or two big shows on the West Coast here, but we also have at least 15 small shows, you know, small, smaller shows, smaller organizations, etc. And I'd be willing to bet you go to any of those shows, not very many bodybuilders. You're going to see mostly bikini, okay? Um, I know the average of the shows that I've done here recently, uh, not done, attended, sorry, I get to keep speaking out of turn here, I need to slow down, because, but yeah, bikini competitors, I'm going to say always two classes, average is probably eight, 
okay? High is probably 20, low is probably is five, okay? So yeah, eight or nine, we'll just say. Um, right behind that is usually physique, okay? Those are the board shorts. About the same, I'm gonna say average is eight, high 20, low five, okay? Um, women bodybuilding doesn't even exist anymore. I, I, I can't remember the last time that I went to a show and saw women's bodybuilding. And even figure, the last show that I went to, I want to say there was six figure competitors. And in my heyday, there was at least 20. Usually they'd split them into about two classes of between 10 and 12, tall and short. So you just look at those facts right there. When the majority of the shows have little to no bodybuilders, heck, one of the shows that I officiated had two bodybuilders. And the rest was all bikini, transformation, model, physique, and uh, even like teens. Um, yeah, man, the sport of bodybuilding right now is, is definitely in a lull. Enough about bodybuilding. Let's talk about rebuilding, Brad. Day three of uh, my weekly four-day-a-week program of whole body training. And uh, let's just get right into it. All right, here we go. So um, I'm covering this microcycle here that I did June 2nd through June 8th. Um, the ones that are highlighted in red uh, were day one. Uh, the ones that were highlighted in green were day two. Usually I take a day off in between day one and two and then day three and four. So it's kind of like on, on, off, on, on. But for day three, uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight these in blue. Uh, so what you're going to see here is uh, my front squat, um, flat barbell bench press, um, right here, side lateral raises for the delts, pull downs, uh, a band row. You're going to see me doing a lot of band work. That's going to be one of my staples in my programs. Uh, and then a biceps variation. Now, for those of you who haven't seen uh, one and two uh, of my vlog, this uh, spreadsheet will calculate. I'll put it right here um, in black with, uh, with white lettering. It, it automatically tallies up volume um, by multiplying the, the average load uh, by the um, sets uh, and then gives you some tonnage. Actually, it multiplies it. Sorry, I think I got my mix all talked up there. Um, and then gives you some tonnage, but it also adds up total repetitions as well. And that's what these numbers are here. So I've got, you know, basically tonnages and total repetitions by body part. And then over here, I'll go ahead and make this uh, kind of, I guess, in, in, in bold. It averages out total load um, per body part. Um, so we'll make this kind of big for you guys so you can see this. So my objective right now is to make these average loads go up. So you can see here, um, so far, you know, compared to um, microcycle one and microcycle two, you can see microcycle three is considerably higher. And right now, to be honest with you, I don't even really care what happens with tonnage and total repetitions because uh, I'm starting from scratch. I mean, I was I was as weak as a kitten. And as I said in uh, um, vlog number two, is, is uncoordinated as a monkey humping a football. Um, so I'm just concentrating on making those average loads go up. And obviously there's going to come a point where isolation movements are probably not going to be able to go up, but that's okay. As long as they're flat and my compound movements are going up, that's all I really care about. Um, last thing, just like in the previous two videos, if you guys are interested in having this sheet in your possession, email me at bradloomis at 3dmusclejourney.com and I'll be happy to email you an Excel version of this sheet. Uh, this particular version is in Google Sheets. It works the best and is the most user-friendly for me. Uh, so that's kind of the way that I prefer it. Uh, and if you want to kind of, you know, have a friendly debate about the state of bodybuilding and whether or not it is a dying sport, just in some sort of a transitionary low, uh, or if you totally disagree with me, just put the comments down below and let's go ahead and have ourselves, you know, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of friendly debate. And um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on to this week's training. The flat barbell bench press is one exercise that I do feel um, my scars, I guess you say, the area that they operated on uh, right below my navel. Uh, when, whenever I take, obviously I, I get into a pretty big arch and a big stretch 
Um, so it really stretches that area. But then also when I take a big, big breath in, um, I, I do diaphragmatic breathing. And it, it, it hurts. Whenever I take that big breath in, it's, it stings a little bit down there. And that's the only exercise um, that I feel any pain down in the area of the surgical site. Everything else is fine. Um, squats, deadlifts, I'm wearing my belt again. Everything is, is feeling good. Now, on these particular front squats, I did not wear my belt. But I'm pretty happy with these front squats. They look good. They're very light. I think this is only 155 pounds. But the depth is good. The bar path is good. And obviously doing all those front squats for a couple of weeks with nothing more than a 20-pound dumbbell, at least it paid off with my technique. Oh. 